Watch new episodes of Rick and Morty Sundays only on Adult Swim. We say it all the time, but I guess all is Glorzo. Yeah, that sounds great. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Rick and Morty parodies. Morty, do you know what the Bechdel test is? The what? For God's sake, Morty, the formula for measuring female agency in a story proposed by lesbian cartoonist Allison. What the hell are they teaching you in that school? Other stuff! I'm in heaven right now. This might be the best day of my life. We will not kill her or her brood. Must kill brood and mother. Get behind me, your brood will seed all life on this planet. That doesn't make doesn't sense. Make sense. For this list, we're looking at the best times the show referenced, took inspiration from, or made fun of popular media. What are your favorite Rick and Morty parodies? Any we missed? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, The Terminator Franchise. Anyone familiar with the series knows Rick hates time travel, especially with how complicated it gets. I don't respect time travel. If Ant-Man and the Wasp can do it, I'm not interested. So it only makes sense that the creators would eventually make fun of it at some point. When Morty accidentally kills an alien snake, he sends one from Earth back in its place. This creates a chain of events causing an endless supply of time-traveling reptiles to come back to either kill or save him, much in the same vein as James Cameron's Terminator series. From shotgun-wielding snakes, the war on machines, to terrifying robot-human-snake hybrids, there are plenty of nods in this episode's plot and character designs. Uh, I feel like we're forgetting something. Oh yeah, uh, thanks for reminding me. Morty, next time stay in the car. Number 19, Alive and the Prestige. After Morty manipulates Rick into making him a save button, allowing him to replay any moment if he doesn't like the outcome, it gets surprisingly dark. Rick reveals that Morty hasn't been time-traveling, but killing Mortys from other dimensions and taking their place, parodying the plot of Christopher Nolan's The Prestige. But what you may not know is that this episode also takes inspiration from a real-life plane crash. When Morty and his girlfriend's plane crashes in a mountain range, they're forced to resort to cannibalism, similar to the events in the book Alive, the story of the Andes survivors. It is an intense moment found in an otherwise silly montage of Morty playing around with the save button. Number 18, Alien and Mecha Anime. In this Alien parody, Rick and Morty are overtaken by face-hugging alien parasites known as the Glorzo. Once they break free, they completely wreak havoc on the Glorzo, believing they're lower life forms. Damn, feels kind of good when there's no guilt, huh? Yeah, it's, it's like in Star Wars. Yeah, just like in Star Wars. Go nuts! In a clever twist, Summer's new thing, a toothpick, saves her from becoming a host body, and she reforms Glorzo society and becomes their queen. After realizing they left Summer behind, Rick and Morty return for her. Still believing the Glorzo to be menacing parasites, they suit up in an excessive transformation sequence in a nod to mecha anime such as Gundam, Voltron, and Ronin Warriors. The lesson here is if the egg looks too wet, just leave it alone. Whoa, Morty, look how wet this egg is. I don't know, Rick. That looks a little too wet. D don't touch it. Oh, I'm gonna touch it. Why are you guys screaming at an egg? Shut up, Summer. Number 17, Training Day. This episode pays homage to many different pieces of pop culture. There's the School of Morty's plot of four Mortys coming of age, mirroring Stand By Me, Rick J22's subplot referencing George Orwell's 1984, and smaller allusions to celebrities, politicians, and other fictional characters. But perhaps the greatest one of them all is Cop Rick and Morty, heavily influenced by Training Day. Morty, you're right. Morty Town is bad, but it doesn't mean that we have to be. Hey, what's going on here, Morty? Wh which, which Morty? Morty? The cop, morons? Don't worry about Rick, Big Morty. He's new. He doesn't understand how it works. Much like the 2001 film, we see a corrupt cop Morty trying to convince a naive rookie cop Rick to take a brutal and dark approach to the job. It was jarring to have the personality switched between a Rick and Morty, but it was nonetheless memorable. What happened? Same old story. Morty's killing Morty's. Number 16, M. Night Shyamalan Films. Well, what's this? Well, what could this possibly be? Because it looks like you're inside a simulation inside a simulation. M. Night Shyamalan is infamous for featuring twist endings in his movies, and M. Night Shyamalan's mocks that tendency from its title to its own numerous mind screws. I see people. They don't know they're dead. 
Rick becomes convinced that he and Morty are inside a simulation, which they are. Their captors are scamming aliens out to find the secret for concentrated dark matter, of which Rick has knowledge. After escaping that simulation, though, turns out they were inside another simulation, and Morty was part of it the whole time. Oh my god, Rick! How dumb are you? You're inside a simulation of a simulation inside another giant simulation! Rick gets the last laugh on the scammers, as he tricks the aliens into blowing themselves up in a twist worthy of Shyamalan himself. And the final ingredient? What the hell? Number 15. The Story Circle We're used to fourth wall breaks and meta humor, but this episode takes it to another level. Rick and Morty find themselves on a train, acting as a literal literary device as Story Lord tries to tap into their limitless story potential to break the fifth wall. You idiots! Our potential isn't limitless! You'll never break the fifth wall before you burnt us out! Is that so? Oh well. Win-win. Rick! What's he doing? He's trying to tap into us, Morty. Resist. They fight their way through a narrative progression while dealing with complications, themes, and diverging plot lines. To top it all off, they perform a Bechdel test to humorous results. The crux of this episode relies on series co-creator Dan Harmon's method of storytelling known as the story circle. It's an excellent way for the show to simultaneously poke fun at itself and pull back the proverbial curtain at how its plots are constructed. We have to leave the train? We don't have to do anything, Morty. This is just a structural guide. We're obviously going to impart our own style. Number 14. Footloose When Morty accidentally has a Gazorpian baby, Morty Jr., he's tasked with raising him while still living with his parents much like the TV sitcom Raising Hope. You're doing great, Morty. Really, you think? I mean, I'm not doing much of anything. Those with a keen eye may pick up on other references sprinkled throughout, but some of the most obvious are from the films Zardoz and Footloose. When Morty Jr. grows disillusioned with the world after finding out that his life has been a lie, he runs away from home. He ends up in a warehouse, where he dances out his frustrations like Kevin Bacon's character in Footloose. You gonna run from the dead? Your it's a fun little moment calling back to earlier in the episode, when Morty suggests his son learn to dance instead of bringing death and destruction to the world. Number 13. Titanic We have to admit, our first choice for a trip would not be to an attraction made to mimic the experience of the 1997 film Titanic. Jerry, on the other hand, is more than excited to go on this romantic getaway with Beth. Have fun, you two. Yes, we will have as much fun as possible on our Titanic-themed getaway. Let's lose the tood, please. It's supposed to be romantic. Of course, you can go on the bow to recreate a moment between Jack and Rose. There's debris to simulate the film's end. Or you can even have a plate of James Cameronian rings. The real tragedy of this moment is that nothing goes wrong as the ship fails to sink due to its faulty rail system. This ship is about to completely miss the giant iceberg. Well, do something! Steer into it! I'm trying! It's too late. Ladies and gentlemen, don't brace yourselves. Did you really expect much from an attraction featuring a lovemaking car to give guests a <clears throat> titanic experience? Number 12. Total Recall Fans of the show have grown accustomed to seeing what happens in the lives of Rick, Morty, Summer, Beth, and Jerry. How could we forget Cousin Nikki, Photography Raptor, Mr. Beauregard, and a plethora of others who turn out to be the creations of memory-altering parasites? Everybody stop remembering! These parasites are like bedbugs and every flashback is another mattress. Look! There's only supposed to be six people in this house. But there's always been ten. No! While the episode not only parodies the 1990 film Total Recall, where implanted memories are used for entertainment, it also pokes fun at a few sitcom tropes. The show smartly blends flashbacks, cutaways, and new character sitcoms used to boost ratings or cut production costs. Well, what do you know about this? You're not in any of mine! It also keeps us guessing which, if any, of the newly introduced characters are real or not. Number 11. The Purge This is not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual Purge, sanctioned by the U.S. government. Commencing at the siren, any and all crime, including murder, will be legal for 12 continuous hours. 
Here we go. The Purge film series is set in a fictional America where, for one night a year, all crime is legal, allowing for a period of lawless carnage and mayhem. In this episode, Rick and Morty land on an alien world where the natives engage in a similar exercise at the behest of the ruling class. Oh, I know what this is! You've been able to sustain world peace because you have one night a year where you all run around robbing and murdering each other without consequence. That's right. What? It's like The Purge, Morty. That, that movie, The Purge? The wanton violence soon brings out Morty's own bottled up anger that he takes out on the planet's inhabitants in a rampage of blind rage. Look Who's Purging now manages to use its film parody to provide a means of insight into Morty's character and provide a very funny and very dark premise for an episode. Number 10. Saw and the Avengers Rick, is, is this a Saw thing? Are you seriously sawing the Vindicators? Morty, I'm a drunk, not a hack. You break the rules, lose the game, or try to leave, you will die. Like in... <clears throat> Saw. Well, I, I think we've seen enough. In a season three episode, it's revealed that Rick and Morty are members of a hero organization known as the Vindicators, who are clearly a veiled parody of the Avengers and to a lesser extent, the Guardians of the Galaxy and even the Justice League. To teach them a lesson, Rick gets drunk, defeats their arch enemy, and sets them on an elaborate Saw style journey through traps designed to screw with them. Congratulations, you are still alive. In the extreme stress of their attempts to escape Drunk Rick's elaborate game, the Vindicators argue among themselves and are generally more of a danger to each other than Rick is, further parodying the Avengers' tendency to fight among themselves. Hold on, how is this now about me? I'm sorry, isn't everything? I thought humans were more evolved than this. Number 9. Die Hard and John Wick Where is it? It seems to be using the air ducts and the mail tubes to get around. Pickle Rick sees Rick turn into, what else? A pickle. Through an elaborate series of events, the scientist manages to fashion himself limbs and eventually escapes into an office. There, Rick finds himself in the middle of a Die Hard scenario. Come on to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. As he must fight a group of European criminals alone in a building using stealth tactics. The action also features plenty of men killed by pencils, which is a reference to the John Wick series. The men also nickname Rick Solenya, which is Russian for pickles, similar to John Wick having his own Russian nickname. Pickle Rick does an excellent job mashing up two fantastic action franchises. <laughs> Number 8. Needful Things and The Twilight Zone When Summer gets a job at a new store that's opened in town, Rick is forced to drive her to work. There, he finds the store's owner is the devil, who stocks a solution to every shopper's deepest desire with a dark price. This aftershave made women want me, but it also made me impotent! A price for everything, Mr. Goldenfold. A price for everything. <laughs> oh my god! How can I not see this coming? Rick challenges him, doing everything he can to one-up the trickster and counteract the various products' curses. The items are actually references to Twilight Zone episodes, and the shop Needful Things is a reference to the book and movie Needful Things, where a devil offers perfect items for his clients' souls. So while this is an amalgamation of two different references, even the devil is no match for Rick's scientific mindset. I use science to uncurse the items for cash, and you get to keep the powers. Number 7. Mad Max Your blood will be my lotion. Whoa, that was cool. <laughs> During their dimension-hopping adventures, Rick, Morty, and Summer encounter a post-apocalyptic dimension that's an affectionate parody of the Mad Max series. Who wants to take a poke at my man Spine Eater here? Yeah! I guess I'll see your asses in that dome! Rick, what the hell, man? From masked madmen to dome-shaped deathmatch rings, this episode features many of the gas punk film franchise's brutal staples. Where is she taking them? A long way from you. <laughs> Rick and Morty even examine something rarely seen in the Mad Max films themselves, the downright domestic downtime between the high-octane adventures. We noticed that you've been putting scrap metal in the blue bin. I got it. Seeing relationship drama play out in a wasteland environment is hilarious and incorporates the parody into the plot of the episode in a fun and unique way. So I can assume you haven't murdered a single person today. Oh, I don't know. I, I didn't mark my murders in my murder log. Number 6. Game of Thrones, Letterman, Cloud Atlas, and more 
No list of Rick and Morty parodies would be complete without interdimensional cable. This episode is packed with so many references, we can't name them all. Rick, will you please go back to me on David Letterman? Infinity's a big number, Jerry. Uh, I don't remember the channel. Ah, go back! What we can say is that many of them are downright ridiculous versions of things we know and love. Whether it's a twisted version of Lucky Charms cereal commercials, Saturday Night Live featuring a piece of toast, or Gazorpazorp Field berating John, we get a glimpse into some of the other realities of Rick and Morty. Come on, Gazorpazorp Field, go easy on me, huh? You dumb, stupid, weak, pathetic, white, white, uh, uh, guilt, white guilt, milk toast piece of human garbage. There's even a version of Jerry where he's a famous actor starring in Cloud Atlas. Even in infinite realities, TV is full of absurdities, wacky concepts, and excessive violence. And we're here for it. Number 5. Invasion of the Body Snatchers and Community The people it takes over, they, they look like your friends, your family, your leaders, but they're not themselves anymore. They're part of it. Then how do you know it didn't get on the ship with you? Autoerotic assimilation sees Rick and his grandkids encountering his ex Unity, which is a hive mind. Unity takes over the minds of intelligent species in a manner reminiscent of the invasion of the Body Snatchers films. Although Rick and Morty flips the premise on its head by suggesting that the people Unity takes over are probably better off that way. In addition, the episode features a short but notable parody of another of creator Dan Harmon's shows, Community, satirizing its cancellation, return, and the pedestal people put Harmon on. They're no different from any of the aimless chumps that you occupy. They just put you at the center of their lives because you're powerful, and then because they put you there, they want you to be less powerful. Never gonna happen though, right? Never. Never. Back in a flash. Number 4. Jurassic Park and Fantastic Voyage Welcome, Morty. Welcome to Anatomy Park! Rick and Morty has a way of combining concepts from different sources to make some very creative plots, and one of the most outlandish is Anatomy Park. After shrinking his grandson down to microscopic size, Rick sends Morty inside a man whose insides he's turned into a theme park called Anatomy Park. Everything from its logo to its exhibits running wild and the park employees are lifted from Jurassic Park. Meanwhile, the investigation of a person's body from within is evocative of the classic of that subgenre, Fantastic Voyage, albeit a far messier version. Don't move. Gonorrhea can't see us if we don't move. Wait, I was wrong. I was thinking of a T Rex. Number three Inception and A Nightmare on Elm Street. You can enter people's dreams, Morty. It's just like that movie that you keep crowing about. You talking about Inception? That's right, Morty. This is gonna be a lot like that, except, you know, it's gonna maybe it make sense. Inception made sense? You don't have to try to impress me, Morty. While it was tempting to give this entry to the film parody that drives its B-plot and gives it its name, The Lawnmower Man, we went with the better-known movies that are referenced in its primary plot. After deciding that tutoring him is a hassle, Rick implants the idea that Morty should get good grades in math in his teacher's dreams in a parody of Inception, which they both name drop. A dream within a dream. Two levels. Three. Not possible. That many dreams within dreams is too unstable. It is possible. Inside the dreams within dreams, the pair eventually encounter Scary Terry, a dream demon whose appearance is akin to Freddy Krueger of A Nightmare on Elm Street. However, Terry doesn't have Krueger's gift with puns. Oh, come on, Terry. You can't think of a pun involving pumpkins, bitch. Hey, leave him alone. Number two, love potion number nine and tribute to David Cronenberg's work. I loot this with water 1,000 to one. You don't want it to be too strong. Come you take a sip and you swallow. And when you speak, women will find you fascinating. Love Potion Number 9 is a cheesy rom-com from the early 90s that sees a man ask a gypsy for help in love and receiving a love potion. Rick Potion Number 9 sees Morty asking Rick for a similar potion. Hey, there's no dangers or anything or side effects, right? Whoa, 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 what am I, a hack? Go nuts, Morty. It's foolproof. Unless she has the flu. However, its effects soon go viral and spiral out of control further when Rick attempts a cure. Rick dubs the monsters that result from these attempts Cronenbergs. 
This is in reference to the numerous movies by director David Cronenberg, who is famed for films involving grotesque mutations and other body horror elements. I know it not leave, swallow a fly, perhaps you'll die. Both parodies, however different they may be, blend together in a magnificently bizarre way. Number 1. Back to the Future and Doctor Who If the idea of Rick and Morty seems familiar, it's for a good reason. It's largely based on two giants of sci-fi. Firstly, the characters of Rick and Morty are basically substitutes for Doc Brown and Marty McFly. Great Scott! In fact, co-creator Justin Roiland once created an animation called The Real Animated Adventures of Doc and Marty, which starred darker versions of the Back to the Future characters. Oh man, my kite's in the tree, Doc. I can't... I hate this stupid tree. I'm so sad. Don't be sad, Marty. We'll go back in time. In addition, despite not featuring time travel, Rick and Morty is a parody of Doctor Who, with its lead duo's dimension-hopping outings resembling the British sci-fi show's Adventures of the Week. With its loving parody of these greats, is it any wonder the show is so awesome? When I create shit, it works, Morty. It's called being talented. Watch new episodes of Rick and Morty Sundays only on Adult Swim.